So we're very pleased to be with you tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about how we are using artificial intelligence at Osprey Informatics for industrial monitoring. Next slide. Okay, so I'm Rosalie Gordon. I'm the director of product at Osprey, and this is my colleague Dave Woods. He's the director of development. And uh, I have a, about a decade of experience in product management in small and large companies, um, also experience in engineering and supply chain. I also happen to meet, uh, run a meetup myself, the Calgary Product Managers Meetup. So you can come and check that, that out next Thursday if, if, if you're interested in that. And um, one other thing I should say is my job at Osprey, this is the first time I've worked uh, with an artificial intelligence product. So we have some interesting kind of perspectives and learnings to share from you, maybe like from people doing this for the, for, for the first time. So, yeah, hi, I'm Dave. Um, this is also the first time I've worked in a company where we use machine learning really at all, so it's kind of exciting for me. I've been doing software in Calgary for a long time and worked for lots of different companies based in different places. Um, apologize for bringing the management layer out tonight. My data science team, I would have brought him, but he lives in Whitehorse, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not always easy to get him involved in this. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, tell you some interesting things. All right, so he's, here's what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, we're going to give you a little bit of information about Osprey, what we do, and then focus on our AI-powered alerts, which were a greatly improved alerting system that we implemented using computer vision. And then we'll end by talking about what is our vision for AI at, at Osprey going forward. So let's start with Osprey. Our customers are companies, industrial companies, that have remote and distributed sites. And they have a problem. Their problem is they need to reduce operational costs. And uh, quite, quite significantly, quite seriously, this is, this is their, their big challenge. At the same time, they are expected to mitigate risks in the area of health, safety, and environment. Um, this is a large market, it's a $1 million addressable market in Canadian oil and gas alone, and our product is applicable beyond oil and gas to other industry verticals with remote assets such as mining, forestry, and agriculture. So here's our solution. It's an end-to-end -end IoT product. This is a visual monitoring platform for remote sites. And I'm going to walk you through this diagram uh, from left to right. So on the left, what we have is cameras, video cameras, nothing special off the shelf video cameras um, that are installed at remote sites um, across Western Canada. And in some cases, we also have something called a cloud bridge installed. And this is a, our edge device. It's um, a local computer installed on site that's used for um, storage and, and um, in the future maybe some analytics. So images are captured on site and transmitted over the cellular network to the cloud. Now we do not want to be transferring HD video over cellular network because that would be very expensive. So what we do is we use video analytics built into the cameras to capture an image when something moves or there's a few other rules we can set up for when images are captured. And instead of sending video, we're sending images only, by exception, to the cloud. So uh, on the capture side, then, we can efficiently manage all these IoT devices, these, these cameras, and, and also other kinds of sensors. You see there is a picture of a drone there we're looking at using um, mobile cameras as well. So what happens when these images get to the cloud? This is where we've started to do our computer vision. So, uh, and our vision is that um, uh, this is where our, this is one of the places where the computer vision will happen. And we're using computer vision to detect uh, items of interest or activity of interest. Um, taking all this uh, visual big data, unstructured data, and turning it into um, useful information that people can use to make decisions. 
And then on the right is, is deliver. And that's where we deliver this important information to all sorts of different users throughout the enterprise. So it could be people in head office, it could be people in the field, it could be operators, it could be um, safety people. Everyone needs information, but they need different information for different purposes. So this is personalized, exception-based reporting for uh, you know, just what you need to do to do your job. And we also integrate with other kinds of sensors and enterprise data systems down here. Okay. So there's many use cases, as you can imagine, for a visual platform like this. And here's a few I can talk about. So the first one is productivity, reducing, um, cutting routine site visits, and prioritizing the site visits that you do based on being able to do a visual inspection ahead of time. So our, comp our customers are making 50% fewer site visits because they can inspect online. Second is health, safety, and environment. So this picture shows um, a FLIR thermal camera monitoring for methane emissions on a tank. And so we're not just using optical cameras, but IR cameras, and we can alert based, uh, based on that so that they can detect the emission and also estimate the size of it in terms of for reporting and, and paying penalties. And then the third use case, maybe the most obvious when you think these are, these are cameras, is, um, is security and supervision. So a, a lot of times our product is used to monitor for the movement of people in vehicles coming and going from site either monitoring that people who were supposed to be there are there, like the contractor, did they show up for the amount of time they, they said they were there on their invoice, or um, detecting crimes in progress. And I'm proud to say <laughs> there are people <laughs> in jail right now because of <laughs> our system uh, uh, detecting, um, you know, there's, there, there is a lot of theft happening of batteries, copper, anything. It's amazing what people will take. So. Um, and this last use case is where we've started to apply computer vision. So this is the one you'll hear us talk about the most for the rest of the presentation. And here's our customers. So the major oil and gas companies in Western Canada. And we also have a number of industry collaborators. And <clears throat> possibly what m is most interesting to this group is this one right here, SWERI, Southwest Research Institute out of Texas is developing some really interesting computer vision, um, particularly around leak detection, and we are partnering with them. So. Okay, I think this is where I pass it. All right, so, uh, so the first place where we're taking machine learning into account is with uh, passive alert, AI-powered alert feature, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, I'll describe to you uh, what we did and how it made our product a lot better. Um, so, Uh, but the idea is you can take these cameras and the output that they'll give you, which is 
label that is activity or however, uh, you know, however it determines that uh, a frame is of, of interest. And these are all video cameras, but like Rosalie said, we work almost entirely with images to the extent that we can. Otherwise, the cost would become very prohibitive. Uh, we can capture uh, video, and it's custom and neat, but we get it for them, but that's about an exception to it. Anyway, so what we did was we wanted to introduce uh, smarter detection, so that would be computer vision, machine learning, uh, to pick out, you know, so we know that a, an image has an event and it has an action, but what is it? Is it a frame? Is it a person? You know, what do we detect and what level of confidence do we want to use? And so when we actually put that into place, we got a huge improvement. People were getting spam to the point where, in some cases, it wasn't a useful product to them because they'd get told about all this motion, all this activity, and, you know, you guys, you all, every single person here gets alerted on something, right, like on their phone, and if it's too much, you're just going to start to ignore it. So we were able to make a huge improvement by using PG tagging. Let's go to the next slide. So this is what the product looks like. There's that little live thing up there. Um, so what we can actually do is give people real-time information. When, you know, they, when a truck drives onto the site, or when a police officer drives, or when a person comes, and we can be very specific. Uh, there was a site we did recently where the only really thing they really cared about was when the train comes. The trains come at all hours. They have no good schedules. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, that's all they wanted to know. So we set it up to use the, uh, the computer vision to, with a certain level of confidence, if you saw a train coming down the track, alert the user. So it could be done in real time. And there's nothing super complex about what we're doing, but it's changed their product a lot. And if you go to the next slide, um, these numbers are hard to read, but it says like seven, the top one is something like 7,000 event reports. And when we started using computer vision, it went down to under 2,000. Uh, it made a huge difference to most of our customers. And Rosalie has cool quotes on here about how awesome we became and how much our customers liked us better, uh, which is completely true. So um, that was that was our first taste of actually you know, taking things and doing uh, doing machine learning to help us out. And the actual machine learning part uh, is something that we'll get into a little bit next. And Rosalie's going to do this one. So there's lots of challenges that we encounter here. I'll tell you about them. All right, so when Drew asked me to talk, he said, uh, keep it real. We don't want the shiny sales presentation. We want to, we want to know, um, you know, the, the, the whole story. So we have a couple slides to tell you about the challenges that we encountered when we were implementing a computer vision feature for the first time. So the first thing I noticed when I came to Osprey is um, this need for massive training data sets. And um, that's not so bad because we have 800 cameras in the field collecting full video all the time. We've got a lot of data, but because we're doing supervised learning, all that data, how, how do you actually uh, label the amount of data you're gonna need for training so that you, your training is useful? And we quickly found out that asking developers to do that job is not a good idea. <laughs> uh, so af after, after all the developers left, and we went, oh, OK, that actually is not a good idea. Um, so then we came up with a better solution. And we actually automated, um, the, uh, automated a process to send images to Mechanical Turk and have uh, Mechanical Turkers draw bounding boxes and label the data and send it back. And, and you know that that all works, and so we have something that we built called the CV toolkit for um, actually um, pulling data from our system, sending it to Mechanical Turk, getting it labeled, and then using that those images for training and testing our our CV. Uh, then there's the explainability problem, and I guess I can I can describe that um, best with a with kind of a story and. Um, I've been working in tech for a long time, and what I found is, from my experience, is if you find a bug, and if you can replicate it and figure out how it should be replicated, and if you bring that to your most senior technical person, they can almost always fix the bug, 99.9% .9 of the time. They can fix it, and they can fix it pretty fast. And so this is what I'm used to. And um, uh, so, you know, when the classifier classifies a, a tree as a person, I take it, well, here it is, and we can, you know, there it is right in front of you. And the, tech, the technical person says, um, yeah, I see that, and uh, we don't really know, right? We don't really know how the computer made that decision. 
And that was a new experience. And that was a new <laughs> experience for our executive um, to have the, you know, people, the technical people kind of shrug their shoulders and say, you know, the computer does what the computer does and we can try retraining, but, you know, we're not sure the results we're going to get or if, or if that will happen again or not. So uh, just a different mindset and we had to get used to that. Uh, generalized ability of learning was a challenge. So we quickly learned that if you have a training set that was taken on a sunny day, that's not going to help you much when it snows or a low, different lighting conditions or different seasons, that we have to have this robust training set that covers all possible um, scenarios for it to be useful because it doesn't generalize. That also means that the off-the-shelf classifiers don't always work that well for us. Um, so for people and vehicles, a lot of the off-the-shelf classifiers are trained on um, consumer data, like what people upload to Google Photos. And, and so people look like people on the street. And at our sites, people wear hard hats and PPE and boots. And the trucks are transport trucks or tanker trucks. And so vehicles are very different as well. So we, um, we need, we can't use the, can't always use the algorithms right out of the box. And then bias in data and algorithms is always an issue with computer vision. Um, not as much of a problem for us be just because of the use cases that we're dealing with. Uh, even more problems.
probably some of you guys are developing, right? Um, so that's a big thing for us. And the other big challenge on the development side, this is more of a software dev thing, if there's any UX people, it's probably not a UX crowd, uh, but if there is anybody here, um, managing things for the end user is really fascinating because for most people, they have different use cases. You, you, uh, you know, if you're a security guy, false positives are okay. If you're an operations guy, they're not typically. Um, so if you're using the same classifier, you have to optimize it locally, it can be difficult. And we've had discussions about exposing some of the factors that you could do to the end user, and we keep shaking our heads. Like, you could give people a confidence slider, but they don't understand. I mean, we, we wouldn't want them to. Like, it's bad, it's a bad experience to give them, I believe, to give them the tools to try to tweak their own results from, you know, from essentially an image classification. Um, and even if you give them the ability to say, well, you know, just let them tell you if the image was good or bad, right? They won't take, they won't take that. Nobody's going to make that button. Nobody, right? Well, not nobody. There's always a guy who will. But most people are never going to do it. So, um, you know, giving people control over what machine learning returns to them versus keeping it simple is a struggle that we have. And I don't know what the right answer. I keep thinking we want to, oh, we could just expose this or that, but it doesn't really make sense. They want the tag and they want it to be right. Um, so what you need to do is behind the scenes is train, and in some cases, the interesting thing is, uh, we were talking before about global maximization, and we really do it. We don't see that, that we could do that with the way our system is set up at all, um, because the use cases vary for the same process pipeline. Um, so if anyone knows what the right answer is, please you know, come talk to me afterwards and you know, let me know. Um, and vision procedures, so things we're doing going forward, um, some interesting things we're doing. Um, you probably noticed, as we said in our diagram, that we actually pull images into the cloud before we tag them. That is not a great solution, especially for us. We want to filter stuff out at the edge. Um, so we're looking at pushing scenes into the edge. It seems to be a trend in the industry in general. Um, you know, the, the phones now have uh, more custom chips to help people do that. And things like Siri and those voice activated assistants, they want to do more processing locally. Uh, which saves your company money, of course, in all cases. Um, but there is a cost, and for a small company like us, we're pretty good at running a big fleet of IoT devices in the field, but if we add more complexity to them, it increases the cost, right? So we're looking at doing the cost saving of putting things locally uh, on the edge. Um, and the other thing we're looking at is implementing more niche classifiers. For a company like us, we think that uh, very specific, there's one of the cases that keeps coming up, there's a guy that wanted to know like if vents would open and close, and that was all we wanted. And you could use probably a general vision classifier to do that, but if you have enough images, you might as well just train something super precise for that, right? Because it's gonna tell you if the vents open or close. So we're trying to figure out how niche we want to go to solve these problems, right? Because it's getting easier to train things, and you need less data with the tools that you have. So we're looking at, so one of the questions we have is to what level we would apply a particular trained algorithm. Um, we don't know for sure, but that's one of the things we're looking at, of course. So we got our next one. Yeah. Rosie, finish it off. Okay. All right. All right, so given all we've tried and learned over the last three years, uh, the way we, uh, we see ourselves now is we are the visual intelligence platform for the industrial IoT, we are not going to be the CV specialists, the ones that are developing the algorithms. We want to be the platform where um, you can plug and play different CV algorithms depending on what solution you're looking for, what problem you're trying to solve, what you are trying to detect for your specific use case. So we see ourselves as the platform to pull in all these different um, third-party CV algorithms. And uh, this is just a picture of, of, some, of some of those that we're doing now and some that are possible for the future. So on the bottom here, vehicle and people detection is what we've just implemented. And that's how we're getting the, the great results for our alerting system. And uh, above equipment status, that's showing detecting whether a pump is pumping or stopped. And we're doing a little bit of that. Um, license plates, uh, we have implemented on a a trial basis, and if we decide to really pursue the security use case, we can drop that kind of um, that kind of uh, analytic in. And then these top two here, gas leaks and oil leaks, this is what we're working on with SWERI. 
and they have some really interesting computer vision to detect gas leaks with an infrared camera. And um, oil leaks, this one, you can see the different colors. They, they're not just identifying if, is there a leak or not, but they can actually tell you what liquid it is and color code it. So that's really interesting. And then all sorts of things for the future. So here's an example of corrosion. We know that, um, that our customers do a lot of visual inspection for corrosion. Uh, and other use cases uh, keep, coming, keep coming up, the vent open or closed, or uh, all different kinds. Of, basically, anywhere you would have a person visually inspecting, and especially where it's going to be dangerous or costly uh, to do that with a, with a person. <coughs> 